we're going to consider in this example how oversampling can improve the quality of practical sampling, in other words, anti-aliasing filter, as well as practical reconstruction with a zero-order hold. So here's how we're going to set this up. We're going to have, assume that we have access to a second-order analog filter and its frequency response takes the form that I've indicated here. It's basically 200 pi squared divided by quantity j omega plus 200 pi squared. And we'll assume that our signal bandwidth is between minus 50 and 50 hertz. And we want to look at how well this filter could serve as an anti-aliasing filter and a zero order hold anti-imaging filter if we use a sampling frequency of 300 hertz which more than satisfies, of course, the Nyquist conditions for sampling the signal. And also, if we use eight times oversampling of this 300 hertz and sample at 2400 hertz. Well, let's look at the anti-aliasing filter first. An ideal anti-aliasing filter, in this case, would have perfect unity response between minus 100 pi and 100 pi radians per second. 50 times 2 pi is 100 pi. And then it would be 0 for omega s minus 100 pi and frequencies greater than that. So we're going to look at the two cases of a sampling frequency of 600 pi, which corresponds to 300 hertz, and one of 4800 pi radians per second, which corresponds to 2400 hertz. Well, the passband constraint or goal is the same regardless of where we sample because that's in, the passband desired passband here is independent of our sampling frequency. So if we look at the gain of this filter at 100 pi, we see you can do the complex algebra just substituting in for omega. We can see that the gain is 4 fifths or 0.8. So we've got some attenuation at the uh, band edges here because this filter starts out with gain at 1, but it slowly rolls off as we get near the band edge. So we've got a little bit of attenuation in the desired signal there. Now in the stop band, we want to have 0 starting at omega s minus 100 pi radians per second. So in the first case, when omega sub s is 600 pi, that means we're going to look at the gain of this filter, this anti-aliasing filter, at 500 pi radians per second. And if you do, again, the algebra on the complex math here, we find that the gain at the band edge here of 500 pi is 0.14. Okay, so components that could alias back into the signal band would be attenuated by a factor of 0.14. Now on the other hand, if we have the 8 times over sampling using the same filter, we're now aliasing can't occur until we get to 4700 pi. And in this case, the gain, again doing the complex math to find out the gain at 4700 pi, we find that it's about 0 0.002. So by using 8 times over sampling, the same analog filter achieves 76 times as great of attenuation as without oversampling. So now we're going to look at the anti-imaging filter. And recall that when we use a zero order hold, what the anti-imaging filter needs to do is be this sort of inverted sync function in order to eliminate the distortion that the zero order hold introduces into the original signal spectrum. And then it needs to be zero out beyond omega s minus 100 pi because that's where those images show up due to the replicates of the signal spectrum. So this would be an ideal anti-imaging filter. We can see how well this simple second order filter meets these constraints. First of all, we'll consider the case where we have a sampling frequency of 300 hertz or 600 pi radians per second. So the desired gain at the band edge is at 100 pi and we can apply 100 pi into this expression for our desired filter and we find that it's pi divided by 6 divided by sine pi over 6, and that comes out to be about 1.05. So 
So the filter is going to go up from 1 to about 1.05. And now if we look at our actual filter, we know from the previous page that the gain of the actual filter at 100 pi is 0.8. So we're supposed to have a rising curvature, but instead we end up with something that's convex. Now the stop band is at 500 pi, and we want that to be zero. And so in this case, the gain in the stop band ends up being 0 0.14. And that again, we calculated in the anti-aliasing case because it was the same stop band. Now when we do eight times over sampling, we're changing omega s. So the desired gain in the pass band of the anti-imaging filter changes. And if you put in 100 pi, for omega and 4800 pi for omega sub s, you find that your desired gain is given by this expression here, which evaluates to 1.007. Okay, so it's, it's practically constant over the entire bandwidth. Very, very slight curvature in the ideal case. Well, if we look at our actual filter, the one that we're gonna use, as before, we're looking at the same frequency, 100 pi radians per second, and the gain of the filter at that frequency is 0 0.08. And I should have absolute value signs around this guy too, because that's the gain. And so I see I need to fix a number of absolute value signs here that were missing. In this case, where we have the oversampling, because the curvature is so slight, the actual filter, which is still concave, does do or convex pointing down, it does do a better job of approximating the response. But the real benefit comes again in the stop band, because now if we look at how this actual filter H2, what the gain is at 4700 pi, we find that it's 0 0.002. So as in the anti-aliasing case, we've got 76 times the amount of attenuation than we did without oversampling. We can summarize these graphically. The magenta color is showing the ideal filter, and I've tried to sketch in the actual filter H2 if we use it. So the ideal anti-imaging filter in the case where we're sampling at 300 hertz or 600 pi radians per second, it uh, drops to 0.8 and where the ideal one goes up to 1.05. And then our actual one is a gain of about 0.14 at the edge of the stop band where we're trying to get rid of the images of the original signal spectrum. In contrast, when we have a sampling frequency of 4,800 pi radians per second, the ideal filter is almost constant. So the simple second order filter does a better job slightly of approximating that. But when we look at the stop band, because 48700 pi is so far away, we see that the gain is practically zero. It's quite small out there. So we're going to have much better suppression of the images with this particular oversampling scheme.